Hello, hello, and welcome to the first ever virtual Gaza 5K and Digital Festival. I am Leila Mukhaber, UNRWA USA's Director of Communications, and I will be your host and MC of today's festivities. Big congrats. Elf, elf, mabruk to everyone who just finished their virtual walk run. I want to hear about it in the chat box. I see a lot of you have already been there chatting about the music you just heard from DJ Fatin and DJ Rami. I've been following along all morning on hashtag Gaza 5K. You guys have been doing such an amazing job getting the buzz out there, but I want to see more. I saw a ton of you sent me your sweaty selfies. I've never seen such gorgeous sweaty selfies via the Dropbox link, but I want to see you using the hashtag as much as possible. So I have a challenge for you. Whoever puts up the coolest post between now and the end of the program will win a prize. You need to stick around to know who that is. But if you use it and put it on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, make sure it is public so our team can see it. And my colleagues, Maideni and Harley, will pick one lucky winner. I can't wait to see what kind of creativity you guys come up with. So I want to also tell you that I'm coming for them right outside of the nation's capital in Northern Virginia, where my family just finished their 5K and it looked like they were having so much fun. I want to hear about the sort of feelings that you had from this morning. Again, use the chat box to tell us. We can see your comments. And as we promised, we're going to bring a big party to your screen. So stay tuned throughout the entire program. The next two hours will be as enlightening as they are entertaining. So don't go anywhere. First and foremost, I'd love for you to uh, give a warm welcome to our dynamic executive director, Mara Cronenfeld. Hello, thank you, Leila. Welcome everyone. Welcome presenters, musicians, artists, and most of all, welcome to all of you who have registered and fundraised for this cause. We love you, you give us energy, you give us joy, Nebkom. I am Mara Cronenfeld, Executive Director of UNRWA USA, and I want to say how grateful our staff and board are to see this global show of support today, especially in this dark political moment, literally dark as Palestinian families in Gaza try to go about their daily lives with only a couple hours of electricity a day during a pandemic and under a blockade, your fundraising and your advocacy counts the most. Today, we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to support Palestine refugees in Gaza and Beirut following the explosion there in August. But today is also about transforming tired and old stories about what refugees are like, false stories about what Palestinians are, about history and what happened 72 years ago and 100 years ago, and the collective punishment of a whole population of families, of doctors, teachers, store owners, aunts and uncles, children and babies. And it's about advocating for this population, especially when the news and politicians haven't always done so. Your support, through your voice, through your donations, your letters to us, your letters to Congress, your showing up here today are opening eyes on this side of the Atlantic and improving lives on the other side. I only started at UNRWA USA in February, and what led me here is this creative community and the joy and comfort we take in coming together to do good. We are doubling down on this creativity in this year's Gaza 5K by featuring the work of some amazing Palestinian and Arab American artists and creators. I wanna name just a few of these brilliant people. First, for her design of this year's beautiful commemorative Gaza 5K t-shirt that I've seen many of you post about, a huge shout out to LA-based Palestinian American designer, Deline Sah. And another shout out and thank you to Justin Nijem, the producer of the Catch and Run Challenge promo video and who has been a huge support for today's virtual program. And also a big thank you to all of those actors, both professional and amateur, who actually threw their iPhone in the air while running for this promo video. To the artists who contributed the beautiful pieces, including in our auction, if you haven't taken a look yet, you must, you will be in awe. To creatives Nadia Sa, Shireen Davis, and Mike Farah, who provided thoughtful advice and engagement every step of the way. And to all of our superstar host committees, to all of our generous sponsors, and last but not least, to this stellar staff of UNRWA USA, whose creativity inspires me daily. Before we move forward with the program, we wanted you to know that hundreds of our friends and colleagues from UNRWA in Gaza, 
coming in from Lebanon, the West Bank, East Jerusalem, Jordan, and Syria are watching this event with you and with us for the first time. There are indeed some benefits to a virtual 5K, it turns out. We are so excited for you, our UNRWA colleagues, to see that Americans care. More than 1,500 people from nearly every state in the United States are here today. And we know more and more Americans will contribute once they are made aware, once they hear and understand the essential work you, our heroes at UNRWA, do every day. So now I want to turn to introduce UNRWA's Commissioner General, Mr. Felipe Lazzarini, who was appointed by UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez following a career of more than 30 years leading humanitarian assistance programs in conflict and post-conflict areas. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to address our community today. We are grateful. Greetings from Amman, the capital of Jordan. My name is Philippe Lazzarini. I am the UNRWA Commissioner General. This morning, I did the 5K run in solidarity with Palestinian refugees. I want to thank you for showing your solidarity with them too. This is an exceptionally challenging year for everyone. The COVID-19 pandemic has trained us mentally, socially, and economically. For Palestinian refugees, Things that many of us take for granted, like going to school or visiting a clinic, are only possible thanks to the generous donation of countries and people like you. We at UNRWA are very proud of our excellent response to COVID-19, but are starting to worry about the recent surge in numbers across the Middle East. This Gaza 5K is an annual run organized by UNRWA USA, our American partners. It's a flagship and very popular event in the US. Runners usually meet across many American cities once a year. They help UNRWA raise awareness about everyday challenges that a Palestinian refugee faces. The run has helped us raise funds for the mental health program that we offer to children in Gaza. This year, and because of the horrific port explosion in Beirut, we will give part of the donation to Palestinian refugees in Lebanon. UNRWA is very grateful for the tremendous support from UNRWA USA and from individual donors. In better times, and if the health situation permits, I welcome you to visit UNRWA operation to show you firsthand our schools, health center, and the large impact of our work on the well-being of Palestinian refugees. Congratulations on your run today, and most importantly, thank you for showing Palestinian refugees that they matter to you, even so far away and virtually. Oh, I muted you. I'm a fool. <laughs> I muted you. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Hi, we're the Mangies from Maryland. Use this selfie sign to get Gaza 5K trending on social. How are we doing, sir? We're doing great. And this is jump number one? Jump number one. And we're going to free fall 5Ks today instead of running? Yep, we're doing it the easy way. Okay, come on, buddy. Was that, pal? That was great, man. Wasn't so bad, was it? No, it was great. It was That's wonderful. Thank best you. Best way to do a 5K, I reckon. 5K straight down. There we go. So cool is our director of finance, Brett Menke. He is fearless, fantastic at finances, and we are super lucky to have him on the UNRU USA team. In my seven years with this organization and maybe 35Ks at this point, I have never seen anyone do a vertical 5K. <laughs> We want to see how you did your 5K. So as his family urged, please use hashtag Gaza 5K and show us how you completed your race. If you did not do it yet, as I see in the comments, some of you didn't do it. 
go ahead and do a run after this event or do it tomorrow and send us your times. So we want to see how you did it and where you did it from. And then as I see, mm, take a selfie. That's how you do it. It's super easy. Earlier, I told you I was going to show you some photos, I think. And since I didn't do that, I would love to show you some of the ones you submitted now. Check out these gorgeous faces. If this is you, chat us in the box. There are so many of you that put out really cool images on the Dropbox today. Look at all those gorgeous Gaza 5Kers. It's going to show you a few, and we'll show you maybe more a little bit later on. There's my bestie from the Westie, Elliot from Team JVP in the Bay Area, San Francisco. Much love to everyone actually on the West Coast right now. I know you're experiencing really challenging weather. Some of you probably were not able to get outside today, but please know we are, our hearts are with you. We hope the fires are put out and we thank you for still joining us regardless of the circumstances. All right, so next. We're going to hear from some really, really important colleagues, our UNRWA colleagues in the field. These next three are actually coming to you directly from Gaza, the Gaza Strip. Take it away, Matthias. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthias Schmale. I work in Gaza as UNRWA's Director of Operations here, and it's a real pleasure to be with you virtually today. I would like to just highlight that we have 13,000 UNRWA staff in Gaza running key services like 277 schools and 22 health centers. And the majority of these staff, more than 95 percent, are Palestinians. We are a refugee agency uh, run by refugees. And it is a real inspiration to work with people who serve the community they actually come from. A second thing I would like to share with you is that uh, you should imagine yourself being a 12-year-old child. A 12-year-old child in Gaza has lived through three wars, has experienced the so-called Great Marches of Return, where the reaction to those marches have left many thousands of people injured and some with disability for life. A 12-year-old child has then um, more recently experienced or is experiencing the COVID-19 outbreak, so fighting a pandemic, and of course, 13 years of blockade. Now for children like these, our mental health work is of critical importance. You will be hearing or may have heard already from some of our mental health counselors who do invaluable work to help children, but of course also adults uh, cope with the psychological traumas they are experiencing. I thank you very, very much for the support Support you are giving to this exciting virtual event, but also to the support that is being mobilized in the United States, around the United States, and is reaching us through UNRWA USA. It enables these Palestinian colleagues, supported by a few internationals like myself, to carry out this critical work that is now more than important than ever. And so let me also share with you that in 2017, I worked for a couple of months in our UNRWA representative office in New York, and I actually had the pleasure and privilege to run the 5K for real um, uh, in New York. And it was um, a lifelong experience just to, to run in solidarity with the Palestine refugees we are serving. And I very much hope that people from my former home, New York, will participate in this virtual Gaza 5K. My name is Dr. Ghada Al-Jadba. I am myself a Palestinian refugee and the first female chief health in Gaza. On the behalf of my colleagues in Gaza working on health and mental health, I thank you for your generous fundraising effort to support our programs and to give awareness to our tough situation here in Gaza. As you know, we are dealing now with the COVID-19 pandemic with no electricity and with extreme poverty, all under the brutal siege in Gaza. Seeing your, this such support from American people is so encouraging to us. And we thank, we thank you and ask for you to continue this solidarity. All of the people here in Gaza are full of life and full of brilliant ideas. All we need are opportunities. So thank you for making that possible. 
Hello, everybody. It's nice to uh, meet you uh, today. Uh, my name is uh, Farid Abu Adra. I am the chief of uh, education here in Gaza and UNRWA. And I want to speak a little about the uh, mental health uh, program here in uh, in Gaza and uh, UNRWA. Uh, we provide basic education for more than 287,000 uh, children in uh, 278 uh, schools. Most of our schools are operating in uh, double shift uh, system and the uh, most of the schools are crowded of students. We have about 1,000 in each of our uh, schools. The mental health program is uh, very crucial to uh, our children as uh, we are suffering from a link period of uh, siege and blockade here in, in Gaza. Beside three conflicts that we faced in the last 10 uh, years. Nowadays, unfortunately, we are like the other uh, country facing the pandemic of COVID-19, which add more pressure on our uh, counselors because it is a new experience for uh, them and they uh, cannot have direct contacts with the uh, children because of their a decision to close the school uh, to avoid spread for the uh, pandemic. So counseling and psychosocial support are provided together with the education. The other thing is that the counselors, they support the teachers how to provide the support for the uh, through the distance uh, learning and the platforms. In addition to that, if we have difficult uh, cases, we have experts here who can deal with those uh, difficult cases. And and in any situation that we find that those cases should be referred to uh, outside the, the agency, we have a referral uh, system together with the other uh, agency in the mental health sector led by uh, UNICEF and WHO. So the counselor make the assessment, then we use this uh, referral uh, system in order to provide the best psychosocial support to students and to uh, staff. Uh, thank you very much. Harley here from Virginia. It's time for a roll call. Rep your state in the chat box now. We're, We're team, team Make Hummus, Not Walls. Join us to help Palestine. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Z, the people from 47 Seoul, sending my love and strength to all those participating in this marathon, in this act of solidarity. I got my track suit on. I'm staying fit. I'm hoping you're all staying healthy and well. Peace and respect. Assalamu alaikum. Marhaba, my name is Amina from Pali Roots, Jadud Falastin. We are so honored to be a part of a project with UNRWA to provide mental health counseling to children in Gaza. Thank you to everyone that is contributing. If you haven't donated yet, please do so now. One love. You just heard from Z the People from 47 Seoul. Unfortunately, they could not perform for us due to COVID-19 restrictions. They're not together and there's some border visa issues. Y'all know the drill. But it's so cool just to know they know about your efforts. They know what you did today and that they are so in support of this cause. We know that we love them. You'll hear the music a little bit throughout the day and you probably heard it in the warm up video if you took advantage of that uh, ahead of your run. Uh, you also heard from Amina from one of our favorite lifestyle brands, Pally Roots. They teamed up with dozens of influencers around the country and amplified our efforts alongside our fearless advocate, Israt Shakir, our Syrian-American sister who's always involved and always helping to get more attention to this cause. Speaking of amplifying our work, we have a tremendous national host committee comprised of many community leaders and faces you will find familiar. I'd like to actually bring a list of names up on the screen so I can pay tribute to them. I'm gonna name the first names real quick. We have Adib, or full names, Adib Avid, Ahmed, Ahmed, Amani Barakat, Amir Zahir, Arsha Wajid, Shirin Davis, Justin Nijam, Lana Barkawi, Maha Frej, Mike Farah, Nadia Sa, Nancy Ween, Nur Arakat, Ra'ed and Ali Jarar, Rania Mustafa, Rania Kowasma, Rasha Mubarak, Rash Darwish, Samar and Will Langhorn, Samir Al Bendek, Susan Peters, Suzanne Akhra Salul, and Yasmin Al Masri. Try to say that list 
three times fast. <laughs> That's a lot of eye rolling. We love you. And actually, if we can, let's turn the camera to them so they can wave hello real quick. Those beautiful faces. <laughs> you can stop waving now. <laughs> Next, from the National Host Committee, is the illustrious Shireen Davis. Hi, marhaba, assalamu alaikum. My name is Shireen Davis, and I'm a filmmaker and television writer director. I'm so honored to be on the National Host Committee for this year's virtual Gaza 5K. I'm joining you all from Brooklyn, New York, which is where I did my walk run. I walked more than I ran, but in truth, I walk faster than I run, so I think I probably did the right thing. Um, my dad is a 67 refugee from the village of Zababde, which is in the north of the West Bank. And my mom is Jordanian, born in Jordan, though her family originally comes from Beit Shabab, a village north of Beirut in Lebanon. I was the first in my family born in the US, in Omaha, Nebraska, of all places. And I grew up in Ohio and Jordan constantly traveling back and forth between the two. So I really spent my youth navigating the identity politics of being considered Arab in the States and American in the Arab world. It was sort of like I had one foot firmly planted on two different continents and I was like this virtual bridge just working to bring the two sides of my identity closer together. I never really felt like I fit in anywhere and that's why I started making movies when I was 12 years old. It was my way of just trying to make sense of my own existence. As I've built my career, I've had the privilege of spending a good deal of time in Palestine. And one of my most memorable experiences there took place when I was casting my first feature film, Emrika. I was looking for the role of the Palestinian teenage son in the film. So I spent some time getting to know the students at the El Rawad Cultural and Theater Training Center in the Aida refugee camp in Bethlehem. The Aida refugee camp actually happens to be the most tear gas place in the world. So I'm sitting in an office and I'm interviewing a student named Hamad, who's telling me, a horribly tragic story about how his baby brother died by tear gas. And as he's telling me this story, gunfire erupts outside. Hamad doesn't skip a beat. He keeps talking as if nothing happened. And I keep listening because that's what I think I'm supposed to do, but internally I'm freaking out. My heart is pounding. I can barely concentrate on what he's saying. And the sound of gunfire just keeps getting louder and louder and closer and closer. And now there's shouting and soon it's just right outside the window. So finally I say, Muhammad, I'm so sorry. I have to go see what's going on. And Muhammad can see that I'm concerned. He's trying to, you know, just tell me not to worry, just trying to reassure me. But at this point, I, I just beyond. So I race outside to try to find someone to tell me what's happening, but no one knows. Eventually the administrators gather us into the main hall, which is a bit of a gallery space with student artwork hanging on the walls. So as the gunfire continues, I just walk around the room and I take in all of the artwork, which already depicts so much of what the students have survived. And meanwhile, the students are huddled in the middle of the room, telling stories and giggling and checking on me to make sure that I'm okay. I have to say that their way of coping with the situation really comforted me. Those students taught me something that day. They taught me fearlessness. What it was to surrender and just exist in the moment because we never know how much time we have. They demonstrated unbelievable courage and care and I will truly never forget them. I remember thinking to myself, if I die, I will die like so many of my Palestinian brothers and sisters. If I die today, it'll just be another day in Palestine. I just happened to be there. I mean, what I saw was just a tiny window into what Palestinian refugee kids see and experience on a daily basis. They have no choice but to learn ways to cope with these ongoing traumas, and we have to support them because they are our future. They are Palestine's future, and they are the world's future. It is more and more apparent in this day and age that no one is an island. We are all so interconnected and interdependent. We cannot exist without the kindness of others. And these programs cannot exist without the kindness of people who come together and make them happen. Thank you so much to UNRWA USA for the incredible work that you do. I am so honored to be here. Thank you all for showing up, for showing Palestinian refugees that you care. I'm truly impressed and touched by the generosity of Americans supporting the work of UNRWA. And I think if more Americans knew the truth of what was happening in Gaza, they would show up too. Thank you so much. 
Hi, everyone. How are you? It's great to be with you. My name is Hani al Matul. I'm Director of Philanthropy. I'm one of the few people who work at the organization here in Washington, D.C., and I get to thank you every day. I, you may have seen an email from me here or there. I just want to make sure you know, you know I do exist in real life, so thank you. I'm here actually to thank all of you, but also I'd like to recognize a few people, individuals, and teams who did an amazing job fundraising for UNRWA USA and supporting the Palestine refugees. So if you guys are ready, we need the drum roll here. Q and the drum roll. In the third place, I'm going to start with the individual teams. In the third place, we have Imtiaz Basrai, who would raise in a little bit under $5,000. Congratulations, Imtiaz. You're in the third place and did a lot of good with your you and your friends and your family. And I appreciate that you're really you're a specialist in mental health as well that helped Americans here cope with these issues. So thank you. In the second place, everyone, Jordan Massar, raising $5,200. Congratulations, Jordan. I'm so impressed by the work you've done with your family and friends, so thank you. And in the individual side, we have a late winner who came to the, who snuck up on everybody. We have Muhammad El Farra, who raised $5,400 for the Palestinian children. Bravo, Muhammad. We're so proud of you. Now, should we do the teams now, Venu? Should we go with the teams? Okay. All right. Wow. I see the third place now. Team Mukhaiber, the family that everybody knows, Layla's family, Ammu Albert, Kaltuhan, everybody. They raised $10,586. That's 132% of their original goal. Congratulations, family. Just outside of the suburb of Washington, D.C. And for years, for decades, this family has been doing a lot of work here at home and in the old country. Thank you, guys. In the second place, we have Ask, Ask Why I Run, a team that just raised $14,000, $187. That's just an amazing number. They have 38 members, folks. What well, bravo, guys. You ran, you walked, you exercised safe distancing, and you did the great work for the Palestinian refugees. So we thank you. Now, and the winner, the top, in the first spot in the teams, we have Team Pally Roots for mental health, folks. Go Pally Roots. We love these guys. They've done a wonderful job. They are raising a little bit under $28,000. So bravo, bravo. A lot of families, a lot of kids will have a lot of benefits, services because of your support. So we thank you. We recognize you and we send you our best wishes. Now, team, friends, I, you know, when we started planning this Gather 5K, we wanted to focus on mental health, as we always do. And especially this has been a difficult year for a lot of us and got us in touch with our mental health. But nobody had anticipated a lot of things this year. You know, the Beirut blast, all of a sudden we were doing cash assistance program for families who needed support. And Gaza now is in lockdown. UNRWA had to step up the food assistance program. My family is in Gaza and thinks this is this is real. There is no stimulus. There is real lockdown. And folks, you know, struggling financially already. And we're talking about the pandemic. So this is why we raised our goal $100,000. So now we're really close to our stretch goal. And this is not we're ambitious because of you. We're able to do this because we know that you support and you always step, come through for the Palestine refugees. Any gift you make today will be used for health health services, for cash assistance, food assistance, education, wherever the need is greatest, UNRWA will deploy those funds. They will have the flexibility beyond our original goal. We will be making sure that those funds go to help families. And Layla and Mara, you know, when I, when I think about this and I think about the Palestine refugees, I couldn't really help but think about all the success stories we've seen. You know, I, I can't help but thank the Palestinian doctor in Alaska who's seeing patients. He also went to UNRWA school. I can't help but think about the amazing, absolutely brilliant eye doctor in John Hopkins near Baltimore, who's helping people see the world better. He also went to an UNRWA school in Lebanon. I can't also help but think about our friend in Seattle who is an architect. She's helping low-income families live in better homes. You know, and it's not just, there's a, so many success stories. There's a robotic engineer for NASA. He's also a an UNRWA and a, and a, a Palestine refugee. There is also a, a public donut maker in Louisiana. He's also one of those success stories. 
And I think to myself, and I see these stories are only possible because of the resilience of the Palestinian refugees, their resourceful, resourcefulness, but also because of the generosity, your generosity. Somebody somewhere 50, 20, 15 years ago saw the potential of these kids and gave them a chance for education. They made sure they don't go to school and empty stomach. They made sure they get health services. They made sure they get vaccinated and they feel safe. And that's why I turn it to you and ask, what sort of what sort of legacy do you think you want to leave? What world do you want to create? What potential do you want to unlock? So think about this way. 10 years from now, 15, 20 years from now, when you meet a Palestinian doing amazing things with your with their life, I want you to tell yourself, wow, I, I made that possible. I took my selfless act of generosity and combined it with the creativity of these Palestinian refugees and the drive to well and survive and made not only this person better, I helped their family, I uplifted their community, I made the world a better place. So today we have a, if you wanna to go to our website and make a gift, we are really, we're about 97% to our goal. So any gift you make tonight, it will be counted toward that. And we will be very grateful. And remember, no amount is too small, really. I, we hear $5, $25, every gift counts. And if you can't send a gift, you could send us words of encouragement. I'm, I'm always grateful to see those. They mean a lot to us. And I wish, I really do wish you see the sparkle in the eyes of our colleagues as they talk about the programs and the impact they make on the lives of families and kids in the areas where UNRWA works. And that, those stories are only possible because you gave, because you care, because you urged Congress. You understand the limitations with the U.S. cutting funds. And I know that you would want to step up and give a gift and remind the people of Palestine and the Palestine refugees that Americans do care. So go to our website, which is behind me here at the Gaza5k.org, and make a gift. And let us make a difference and build your legacy. And again, I thank you today. I thank you tomorrow. Forever, we're grateful. And I will be back giving you updates on how well we do. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the program. Hi, we're the Fayans. Please help us help the kids in Gaza. Hello everyone again. Congrats to the fundraisers, the winning fundraisers. And also thank you to Hanny for your top-notch fundraising stewardship. If you write Hanny an email, he is going to respond to it and he gets hundreds of emails a day. And like Hanny said, any funds we bring in after 250k, which was our original target, any donations you make today will make such meaningful impact during these incredibly difficult times. So we're thankful for any support you are able to provide today. Now we are going to award the top three overall runners in the male and female categories. And I um, cannot, can you see that screen? So um, we will, I am unable to see the screen guys. It's it's too small and how we have it here. So we will be emailing those to you. Uh, actually, there's a link in your inbox right now, unless my team can quickly text me a screenshot of that. Hey, Mari, can you hear Layla in the background? Yes. Can I help you out here with these names? Layla, please go ahead and name the top three in the male and female categories. All right, be my pleasure. Um, so I see we have in third place from Maryland running in 20 minutes, Bruce Volker. And in second place from Canada, our first Gaza 5K from Canada in 19 minutes and 32 seconds, Sam Hirsch. And in first place for the male category from New Jersey, running in 17 minutes and 46 seconds, Aiden Taylor, congratulations to the gentlemen. And for the female category, I see a few familiar names running at 20 minutes and 57 seconds. From the Relay Run for Refugees and Right to Movement Palestine, we have Hiba Abu Hamdiya from Georgia. In the second Hibba. place, running in 20 minutes and 39 seconds. From Pennsylvania, we have Rima 
Alaush, I hope I said your name properly. And in first place, I know this person and they ran in 20 minutes and 25 seconds. These three women ran in just a few seconds of each other. In wow. first place, we had Cherie Bennett. So congratulations to all you top three. You'll see listed below the top in each age category. A quick shout out to Zane Hutchinson, Alexandros Maniutakis from Greece, Sam Hirsch again from Canada, Nasser Ben Ahmad from Maryland, and from the most uh, wise category, David Benedict from Virginia. And um, then I see for the females, Cami Michelle, Sherry Bennett again, Mona Fatur and Lubna Fahum. Wow, that was from the UK, Greece, and all over the States. Wow. This is so thrilling to see people from all over the world. Great, thank you, Layla, for pitching in there. And thank you all of those to, who ran and all of those who fundraised. We are forever grateful. Onward and upward. Shukran. I'm Yasmin Faraj, and I'm Noel Tulio from Virginia. Representing Team MacGyver, and we are proud to be a part of this historic Gaza 5K! Um, wow. Thank you again, Mara, for announcing or helping to announce those winners. Thank you to Hanny for awarding the top fundraisers. You all are the reason why this work is possible through your efforts, through the awareness that you raised, through all of your dedication. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you for sticking with us. I'd love for you to learn more about these programs that you're helping. So speaking of, just moments after we launched the virtual Gaza 5K on August 4, we learned about the massive explosion in Beirut that devastated more than half of the city. As a result of this, we immediately got in touch with our UNRWA colleagues because half a million Palestine refugees reside in Lebanon. And we wanted to ask how we can find ways for Americans to support the relief efforts. So if you're not already aware, a portion of today's fundraising is going to provide cash assistance to Palestine refugee families in Lebanon. And we hope that it helps them. We also hope that it helps to boost the economy. Providing cash assistance allows refugees to make decisions about their own needs, which they know best. Our love to them and all the people of Lebanon during this time. It is my pleasure now to turn over the mic to my UNRWA colleagues in Beirut to tell you more there and the work that we are doing to help. Hi, I'm Claudio Cordone, and I head UNRWA here in Lebanon. Thank you very much for participating in this uh, uh, virtual Gaza 5K. It is very important that we support Palestine refugees here in Lebanon through UNRWA. UNRWA provides in Lebanon all range of services for Palestinians, from education to uh, health care. We have a range of social services, and we take care of the infrastructure in 12 official refugee camps. And our support is essential, particularly at this time, because Palestine refugees in Lebanon are a marginalized community and they have been particularly affected by the massive economic crisis that is affecting the country since last year. On top of that, we also had the spread of the Corona-19 virus that has uh, uh, impacted uh, uh, refugees as well as others. And uh, most recently, we had the massive explosion in Beirut that has added to the deteriorating economic situation. We have Palestinians in Lebanon that uh, have, uh, no, have very serious restrictions on the right to work. They have no right to property. And the levels of poverty and unemployment have been rising. For these reasons, among the many activities, uh, UNRWA is uh, initiating a program of cash assistance to help uh, Palestinian families who are most in need. So your support in this case uh, is uh, critical. UNRWA is in fact uh, the key lifeline for all Palestine refugees here in Lebanon. And so I want to thank you for your support. Hello everyone, I'm Leila Qaisi. I'm the Chief of Relief and Social Services Program in Lebanon. The overall difficult context of Lebanon politically, financially, and economically is aggravating the already vulnerable and precarious situation of Palestine refugees in Lebanon. At normal times, UNRWA support refugees who are in dire need and who fall the poverty line. 
under its social safety net program. UNRWA supports 61,709 uh, beneficiaries with regular cash, in addition to 27,000 people who fled from Syria into Lebanon. However, with the current uh, COVID-19 crisis and the repeated lockdown, the capacity of the Palestinian refugees to earn income has diminished uh, significantly, as the majority of them working in the informal sector and work on a daily basis. The type of challenges the Palestinian refugees are going through today include, first, the uh, lack of job opportunities, sec second, the inability of the refugees to secure their basic needs of food and uh, basic items, especially with the increase in prices of these items on the market by at least 40%. And thirdly is, is the poverty level, which has increased to unprecedented levels, which has increased over 65% among the Palestinian refugees from Lebanon and over 89% among the Palestinian refugees from Syria. What is UNRWA's response to this situation? UNRWA intends to support the refugees uh, with cash assistance to prevent further deterioration in their socio-economic situation. The total amount required to, to be able to uh, distribute uh, the cash assistance to the whole population is 10.5 billion US dollars, which will be distributed to 257,000 people at the rate of $40 per person. Lastly, let me thank you for your support to UNRWA and thank you for your interest in the Palestine refugees in Lebanon. Hey guys, it's Mara. Stick with us. We've got some great artists coming up. We have Alia Shaukat, Omar Fendim, and many, many others. Now back to the show. I have great things coming your way, so stick around and keep using that hashtag, hashtag Gaza5K, and tag UNRWA USA. Don't forget the USA part. One of the most meaningful moments of the program for me personally is what you'll hear in the next segment, where you'll hear from two UNRWA counselors in the Gaza Strip. There are over 250 counselors in the Gaza Strip that work with UNRWA. They are Palestine refugees themselves, and many of them are with us today, tuned in to this program. Please use the chat box to show them some love and show them how much you appreciate the work that they do. Obviously, we fundraise because we care about it, but let's show them with our words as well. I've had the privilege of visiting Gaza several times, and on those visits, I've met many counselors, and I've been able to observe some of their sessions with groups of children. And I'll say their work is absolutely transformative. The things that kids face in Gaza are unimaginable, from blockade to recurrent violence and extreme poverty. Most kids have never left the Gaza Strip perhaps unless they had a medical reason and were issued a permit to do so. It's really, really challenging to be a kid in Gaza right now. On top of that, there is a pandemic and they're under total lockdown. So the two people coming up next, again, are people that are behind this mental health program and the people we've been fundraising for. Um, and they are Nevin Afana and Shahir Zwaitar. My respect again for all that they do, um, my love for them grows exponentially the more I learn about their work. Over to Nevin. Hi everyone, my name is Nivin Afana. I'm glad to be with you today. I'm 39 years old, I'm from Gaza. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology and I am a school counselor working at UNORWA Intermediate School in Gaza. The delivery of education to Palestinian refugees living in areas of crisis is a continuous challenge. The psychological well-being of students is always one of the top priorities on the UNORWA agenda. This strategy is based on many international and local studies that indicates the importance of mental health on the life of children in general and on the education process in particular. There is no doubt that schools represent a mirror of the city hence all challenges experienced by the refugees community is reflected in our schools. Gaza community has been living for a long time of continuous violence due to military conflict, siege and poverty 
At school, we are dealing with a huge number of children who are suffering from the negative consequences. We are talking about uh, learning difficulties, uh, anxiety, depression, trauma, and behavioral problems that are becoming more and more spread among the children. The response of mental health program at UNORWA is to strengthen the psychological well-being by providing psychological counseling services for students and their families, and complementing it with creative approaches to respond to a new and challenging context. We as counselors try to uh, help students cope with these uh, challenges uh, and uh, difficulties using the strength that they have individually and in groups. Uh, we aim to make our schools a um, model of community in terms of containment of students with various psychological uh, hardship. We provide individual and group counseling uh, sessions, family counseling, uh, regular uh, recreation activities. Uh, we also support the capacity development of teachers in identifying and the, uh, responding to students' diverse needs and providing psychosocial support uh, in the classroom. And also for the cases with extreme uh, problems uh, and ones uh, in need uh, for protection and other uh, advanced intervention are directly handled by our specialists. The specialists can engage our UNORWA departments like social services and uh, health departments or external partners uh, as uh, the individual uh, child needs. Also, the, the referral to outside the agencies under the umbrella of mental health uh, and uh, psychosocial support uh, sector led by UNICEF and WHO in Gaza can be one of our options as well. With the current uh, development with regard to COVID-19 crisis, uh, the function of our counselors uh, has become more vital and added stressors imposed on our staff and beneficiaries. Hence, uh, the mental health uh, uh, psychosocial support unit has modified uh, the strategies to be ready for online support for staff and children alike. And also the agency is currently putting a, a great offer, effort, uh, efforts to establish uh, such vital infrastructure for counselors as well as other uh, education sectors. The engagements of parents are, uh, and uh, the wider community uh, has vital uh, importance in, in times of emergencies as the parents are in, engaged directly by counseling and awareness sessions uh, on uh, many topics, including psychosocial support, safety, and security of their children. One of the cases that I have uh, worked with, uh, which clearly reflects the importance of uh, parents' uh, engagement, is the case of 13 years old girl. Uh, the loss of her father, who was killed in uh, during military actions, has uh, affected uh, her. Uh, as she uh, gradually fell behind uh, and uh, lost her self-confidence. By the time she reached uh, the eighth grade, she couldn't read, uh, couldn't write uh, or count as well as uh, her peers. Having a hard time uh, following her teachers, uh, he would uh, sit in the back uh, of the classroom, uh, feel bored and lonely. Her mother reached out, uh, reached out to UNORWA school uh, for help, and the girl was referred to me. And uh, then I started uh, working with her and her mother on individual session, aiming uh, to restore a health, uh, a healthy relation between them, and to help her uh, uh, to explore uh, her uh, feelings and thoughts about her father and about her own petitional and goals and also to help her mother uh, to support herself and uh, her daughter. She is now feeling bitter uh, when asked uh, what she thinks of the schools. Her face now lights up and the smile. Uh, she knows uh, that she still has uh, a long way to catch up uh, and build uh, a better future for herself. Uh, you know that our work uh, here in Gaza is challenging, uh, but uh, also rewarding. I am passionate with my work, uh, which allow me to draw smiles on children's faces when we observe positive changes in the lives of children and their families. 
despite of all difficulties we are facing, especially the current uh, problem of uh, job insecurity, we put all our efforts to help our uh, children and uh, make them uh, feel better. Uh, and for myself, finally, my goal for the near future uh, to register to for my uh, for PhD studies in the same specialty and to keep working with the children because there is no health without mental health and in that we believe and also uh, the Palestinian children here in Gaza deserve all the best. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Shahir Zaitar. I have a master's degree in community mental health. I work as a school counselor at the Imam Shafi Secondary School in Gaza. As a school counselor, I receive students with psychological development and mental health needs and provide counseling guidance individually in groups or with their families. I also provide the identified students and their families with community and public mental health education and other primary prevention activities. My responsibilities also include the referral of identified students to other community mental health services. I was raised up in a refugee family living in Bicham in Gaza. My passion about mental health began when I was a child. My father was a psychiatrist. He spent his life uh, serving refugees and uh, neighbors. At that time, I was studying in uh, UNRWA primary and secondary schools, where I touched the importance of the presence of psychological counselor along with support from within the family. I have felt since uh, that uh, mental health is a first class humanitarian as it affected my thoughts and uh, behavior uh, in a deep way. So I decided to study mental health uh, to share happiness and hope to other people around me. Let me tell you a story. One day, uh, a parent came to me seeking help for his 14 years old son, Ahmed. Uh, he complains that Ahmed started experiencing uh, intense fear, nightmares, uh, outbursts of anger, and decreased uh, concentration in study. These symptoms appeared after uh, parents' divorce and his older brother's uh, uh, death in an escalation. I spoke to Ahmed and built uh, a good professional uh, mentoring rapport. Uh, the first words came out from his mouth where uh, I need someone understand me, I need someone uh, hear me. And then he cried a lot. I designed uh, a child center approach uh, counseling plan. His parents and teachers uh, engaged in the plan too. The sessions uh, comprised uh, stress management, the uh, COVID strategy, strategies uh, and uh, uh, the briefing. After several uh, sessions, uh, Ahmed was again able to communicate with the family, uh, teachers, uh, his friends, and uh, it was also noted that he, uh, his academic achievement uh, became uh, more satisfactory again. Uh, it's very important to know uh, when we ask a child, uh, when we ask a child, uh, what do you want to be in the future? This is about hope and about a dream. Uh, it's very important to know we cannot change the environment, but we can impact hope to change environment. Hey y'all, it's Maydany here, and we've been sitting for quite some time now, so I think we're overdue for a little bit of a stretching break. We have one led by our friends at Right to Movement um, that we'll queue up right now. Thank you, Right to Movement Palestine, who led us in a warm-up earlier. If you saw the pre-countdown from the wall, 
in Bethlehem. They are amazing, amazing group of people. And last year I was with Emani, who you might've seen from the warm-up video and dozens of runners from Right to Movement, Movement including top runners, Hiba from Georgia. And they ran 250 miles from New York City to Washington, DC. Yeah, down 95, down side roads, down back roads, Many of them, it was their first time in the U.S. Imagine navigating the streets, even if you knew them, much less being in the country for the first time. And every time we entered a new city, you better believe we were bumping that song, Sham Step, from Intro to Sham Step, 47 Soul, every single time. Windows down, music blaring, 15 passenger vans hyping up the whole city. I will never forget that. Every time you hear that song, it just brings back that memory. I want to give, again, big love to Right to Movement. Big love to 47 Soul and next up, the stars of our program. Before that, because it's related, I want to give a big shout out to one of the teams that inspires me the most and was giving my team a run for their money, Team Pally Kids. There is a team comprised fully of kids and they are such rock stars. They raised so much money and they ran and they walked and they navigated soccer practice and online school and doing something for their fellow kids in Gaza. So Pally Kids, thank you for what you did. Next up, speaking of kids, like I said, the stars of our program, UNRWA student parliamentarians from both Gaza, Gaza and Lebanon. These students were elected by their peers to represent them in democratic elections, really amazing systems. Every time I go to Gaza, I get to meet representatives from the student parliamentarian group and they are the most fierce teenagers you'll ever meet in your life. So you won't meet kids like these, but I'm so glad I can give you access to them. And I'm really honored to introduce to you Ahmed, Shada, and Lean. Thank you so much for being here with us. اسمي أحمد الجمل وأنا لاجئ فلسطيني من قطاع غزة وعمري 16 عاما أعيش في مدينة رفح كنت رئيس البرلمان الطلابي على مستوى أقاليم الأونروا بين عامي 2018 و 2019 والذي تم انتخابه ليمثل أصوات أكثر من نصف مليون طالب وطالبة في أكثر من 700 مدرسة تابعة للأونروا في أقاليم عملياتها الخمسة الأردن ولبنان والضفة الغربية بما في ذلك القدس الشرقية وسوريا وقطاع غزة اسمي شدا حمد عمري 15 عاما وأنا أيضا عضوا في البرلمان الطلابي على مستوى أقاليم الأونروا أنا لاجئة فلسطينية من قطاع غزة أعيش في منطقة بيت حنو اسمي لين صبح وعمري 13 عاما أنا عضو في البرلمان الطلابي على مستوى قاليم الأونروا وأنا لاجئة فلسطينية من لبنان وأعيش في بيروت منذ أن ولدت وأزيز الرصاص يخترق أذني وأقضي أيامي في حالة من الخوف والقلق لقد شاهدت ثلاثة اعتداءات عسكرية كبيرة عندما كنت طفلا في عمر الرابعة والثامنة والعاشرة قطاع غزة ما هو إلا سجن مفتوح يعيش فيه أكثر من مليوني شخص في مساحة محدودة للغاية فالحصار المفروض على قطاع غزة منذ أربعة عشر عاما يزداد سوءا يوما بعد يوم في عام 2012 كان من المتوقع أنه بدون حل عادل ستكون الحياة اليومية للفلسطينيين في قطاع غزة عام 2020 أسوأ مما هي عليه الآن لن تتوفر فعليا إمكانية الوصول إلى مصادر مياه الشرب المأمونة وستستمر معايير الرعاية الصحية والتعليم في التدهور أما توفر الكهرباء بأسعار معقولة ستصبح ذكرى بعيدة بالنسبة لمعظم الناس جاء هذا الاقتباس في التقرير السنوي للأمم المتحدة في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة واليوم نحن نعيش هذا الواقع في كثير من الأحيان أسترجع الهجوم الذي شن عام 2014 على قطاع غزة كنت حينها في التاسعة من عمري أتذكر حين هربنا أنا وعائلتي من المنطقة حالنا حال معظم سكان بيت حانون 
حملنا معنا فقط أهم الأشياء من حولنا أهالي المنطقة يهربون من القذائف التي تتساقط لن أتحدث كثيرا عن الحرب سأكتفي بقول أننا حين عدنا لم نجد سوى حطام منازلنا هذه الذكريات الواضحة للحرب ليست الشيء الوحيد الذي يؤثر على الصحة النفسية لأطفال قطاع غزة فالتعرض للعنف كالقصف الجوي يسبب ضغوطات وقلق نفسي شديد في حياة الأطفال فنحن نخشى أن ننام ليلا خوفا من أن نستيقظ لنجد اسم أحد أفراد العائلة مدرجا ضمن قائمة الشهداء أو الجرحى لقد وجدت في الدراما طريقة لنقل آمال وأحلام أطفال قطاع غزة حيث يتيح للتمثيل الفرصة لتسليط الضوء على حياة اللاجئ في قطاع غزة وأن أظهر للعالم إبداعنا ومواهبنا أتمنى يوما أن أشارككم هذه الموهبة On the 4th of August 2020 Beirut experienced an explosion that shook all of Lebanon Our house shook so hard and although I wasn't physically harmed my moral and mental health were greatly affected Beirut which was once the city of culture has turned into a city of ruins we are now suffering from fear and anxiety the explosion killed 180 people and left more than 5,000 wounded the sound of the explosion is still ringing in my ears this coupled with the general economic downturn and COVID-19. The situation in Lebanon has greatly affected my outlook into the future. I can dream, achieve, and build paths in my imagination, but at the moment, not they are all crushed due to, the, due to the difficult situation we are living in. It is my dream to simply live in a stable and safe country. As school parliamentarians representing Palestine refu refugee students, our responsibility is to make sure their voices are heard wherever they are. We are here to tell you that Palestine refugee children in Gaza and Lebanon need your support now more than ever. Honorable health centers and schools provide psychosocial counseling services. However, this program has unfortunately been severely impacted by the ongoing UNRWA funding crisis. Palestine refugee children and youth like us need your support. We need to protect the rest of our childhoods and save our future. Thank you for being here today for virtually running in solidarity with Palestine refugees and for supporting the mental health program in Gaza and urgent relief funds with Palestine refugees in Lebanon. On behalf of our peers in Lebanon and Gaza, we thank you. Aren't they fantastic? We must honor the dreams of Lean and her fellow children, refugees who have powerful voices in any language that they speak. These are the lives we impact every single day with your donations. You are helping to ease the anxiety of these children who have experienced extremely traumatic events that nobody should ever have to live through, much less children. Let's protect their childhoods, like Lean said, by bringing in as many donations as we can today. I'm told we're less than $10,000 towards our $350,000 goal. I have so much faith that you will come through for these children, that you will come in for Palestine refugees and you will show them how much Americans care, how much the people of the world care. And you will do that with your words and your dollars. All right, Hanny, you wanna hear a joke? If I have to. You do have to, so knock, knock. Hey, who's there? Woody. Woody who? Would you like to make a donation? <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, how about I give you another one? Sure, do it. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Anna. Anna who? An amazing chance for you to do something for Palestine refugees. It really is. So right? do support us and donate. Folks, as you see, we're not going to quit our day job because of comedy. So keep, uh, keep, keep, the donation, keep, keep the donations coming. Please do.
Hi everyone, my name is Malak Matar. I'm 20 years old. Um, I'm a Palestinian artist from Gaza. I'm currently in Istanbul. Uh, I started painting at the age of 14, and that was it during the last war in Gaza. Uh, as a child, I survived three wars, and art was a perfect way for me to cope with the trauma and also as a therapy. Um, the, art, the first art material I received was from my honorable school as I studied there for, for nine years. And this time I'm very honored to be part of the Gaza 5K program. Uh, I also put some of my artwork for people to buy and support the program so people in Gaza can feel supported, can get the help they want. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Helen Zagab. I'm a Lebanese American artist, and I'm speaking to you today from my studio in Washington, D.C. I am very proud to be part of this auction to raise money for Palestinian refugees in both Gaza and my home country, Lebanon, um, especially now hard hit because of that horrible explosion that they uh, suffered uh, several weeks ago. Um, the paintings that I selected for the auction uh, represent to me family and community and peace. And I think they're all components of my greater um, concepts of promoting dialogue and bridge building and understanding through my work uh, as a visual artist. I so appreciate your generosity today and um, thank you very much again for the honor and the, um, the ability to represent UNRWA and your great works here with this auction. Thank you. Hi everyone, how's it going? I hope you're enjoying the program. It's me again, Annie, Team Owner Y USA. I'm happy to hear the good energy, see the momentum going about fundraising. So keep it up. Uh, we are really close to our meeting our target. We are about ten thousand dollars shy from achieving our financial goal for this event. I'd love for our colleague and our fearless leader Mara when she calls our owner friends to tell him, hey, the Americans truly care, we've met our target. Hey, Crush, if you call my mom in Gaza today, I want to tell her, listen, mom, your son did something good today because people really care. And I want to make sure we're there. So you have the link to give and donate. And, you know, would love to chat with you more. There's also other ways to help. I'm going to help to bring my friend here, Rush, to help us answer the big mystery. Is the dish a pizza or not? Hanny, there's no doubt. Um, we have here in Chicago the number one deep dish pizza that you can find. Also, the number one falafel, number one kanafa. If you're a falafi like myself, number one chanafa. You know, there's so much love here for Chicago and, and being the largest Palestinian community in the country. Um, yes, we're very proud uh, to be part of this race, to be part of this event. And uh, we're so blessed to be part of the UNRWA USA family and putting together an unbelievable event. You know what? Why don't we do this, Hanny? Let's celebrate the success by giving away. Now, I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here, but can we do a Kafia giveaway right now? Can we do? Yes. Beautiful. You got it. We have some uh, original Kafias from Khalil. Hebron, you guys, this is, remember, it's uh, Rush, you got it. You're the boss. Tell me. Sure. And let's have fun right. with it. I, I appreciate this. We're off to a good start. But because of my loyalty to Chicago, can we at least make sure the first kafia will go to some the first person right now on your screen from Chicago that puts their name in the box? They're gonna get a kafia. Can I, we I think do we right have now? one? You got all right. Who you that quickly? Uh, I think she just did it beforehand. But uh, if somebody else wants to step. Come on, Wahad, Nain, Kalata, another comment, Chicago. Right, go ahead. Give, us, give us one more because guess what? I got a little surprise for you. Can we get okay. the first person from Chicago? Get that name. You call her right now, Hanny. Who's the winner? Okay, we got one uh, right now, I think. So Erin Lynch, she has the kafia. She wins. Thank you, Erin. We love you that you love Chicago. 
uh, follow up with my colleague Venu will mail you one of these kafiyas. And thank you for tuning in. Who next? Who, who should we? All right, let, let's keep it going here because here's the thing. In the Midwest, I always get this feeling. The Palestinian community, we don't get the love. So we got to keep, we don't get the love that I feel like we deserve. For example, Ahl Milwaukee, large Palestinian community. Matter of fact, many from my hometown back in Palestine called Batin. Can I get the number one person, first person from Milwaukee that's tuning in right now into the Unre USA virtual Milwaukee. 5K event just like that? All right, go ahead, Hanny. Do we have somebody from Milwaukee? Uh, I'm not sure. It's uh, Iman Abu. Are you Milwaukee or are you Chicago? Let us know. Because Milwaukee, we could do Madison too. We love All Madison. Right, you know what? Call us. Malish. Okay. Yes, of course. Let's go, Madison, another beautiful town. Yeah, well, I'm going to throw another one. Madison. I'm going to throw another one. Anybody from Utah where I went to school? Anyone wow. from uh, Nevada? Tell You're us. Right write, a, write a comment there. And then we're going to talk about the art and the amazing art auctions we've seen. Our colleague, Venu, will keep an eye out uh, for these comments. We have Tennessee. Is Tennessee okay? Do we like Tennessee? So, I'll tell you what. Let's do this, Hanny. First of all, you're the first Palestinian I've known that ever name-dropped Utah. Much respect for that. Boy, the diversity of, of this virtual event that we're doing right now. Let's do this. Let's get into now the auction and why we're doing this, and then we'll save two more for the final. We have Milwaukee. Mar Maria Ramirez, she's going to get one. All we right, have another. Maria. We're good. We're good. All right. So let's All talk right. about these awesome. amazing artists. Tell us. Tell us All more. Right. What do we have today? So First of all, salam alaikum. On behalf of everyone, Ahl Chicago and around the country, my name is Rush Darwish. I'm a proud founding member of a group called the Refugee Life Foundation. Also, uh, we started our own running team called the Running Refugees. Visit runningrefugees.com when you get an opportunity. Now, we are so blessed and thankful, Hanny, for all the beautiful artists that have come through, that have donated their artwork, and we are now doing a live auction. Take a look, everyone. We're talking about these incredible, beautiful artists who really touch your soul, that take us inside what it means to be a Palestinian, what it means to be an Arab American. And uh, we're lucky to have these individuals, people like Manal Deeb, Malik Matar, and who's, by the way, Hanny, considered the Picasso of Palestine and Helen Zugayev, and many other artists who have contributed. We are asking all our friends and family who are part of this program right now, we are short of our goal, $10,000. Please take a look at this artwork, make a bid, and make sure you take one of these art pieces home. Remember, you're not only taking the artwork, putting it in your room. Of course, when people walk into that living room, Hanny, they're going to walk into that office. Now there is a story as to where and why you got this piece of work. It's not just something that's beautiful that's gonna be in your house or your office, but more importantly, it's gonna to go to the children of Palestine to make sure that they're provided for. And yes, alhamdulillah, we've done so well today with making sure that we, we reach the kids to get the mental health support. However, uh, the funds that we're gonna get from this portion right here is gonna help so many families uh, financially making sure that they pay their bills, making sure that there's food provided for, making sure that they get the medical assistance they need, putting cash in their hands, because that's what they need now more than ever, especially with the COVID-19. So, Hanny, uh, we yep. are encouraging everyone, please, you all got a link, go into the auction, make sure to place your bid. There are some beautiful, I'm actually checking it out right now, big, beautiful artwork, many of them 20 by 30 in size. This is great. We have uh, artwork on my prayers. Mm -hmm. Uh, full Dreams, Tholb. These are the names of the pieces of work from Anal Deeb and Helen Zuhayev and so on and so forth. Please so go on. So we are short of our, grow, uh, of, our, of our goal right now. We're just a little bit short. Hanny, tell $8, us. $8,000 now. Tomorrow. Thanks. The people are stepping up, so we're about $8,000 shy from our financial goal. So I think we can get there. Chicago, get us there. Houston, uh, Texas, we're, we love you. We want to make sure we have a strong finish here. And a big shout out to these amazing artists. You've, you know, there's a lot of love that goes toward them. We want to thank Dagmar Painter, our friend from the Jerusalem Fund, for making all this happen. Rush, what, what other inspirations? You see, the auction platform is behind me. There's, you have to place yeah, your bit there. I'm, I'm, Midnight. I'm looking right now, Hanny, and I'm just, I'm, I'm actually blown away. Masha Allah, the beautiful artwork by these artists. I see uh, Olive Harvest, uh, which is number seven. If you look along, and number nine. It says, when peace dies, embrace it. It will live again. 
Uh, isn't that the story of, of what we are as Palestinians? The, all This is not something, Hanny, where you go like the Target and you pick something up. We're talking the original. Exactly. So please, my friends, my family, people are tuning in. Let's get to our goal. And let's, I'll say, oh, by the way, Hanny, I just got some breaking news. See, really? A lot of the way we hook people up. Uh, for people who bid and the ones who uh, received the winning bid, uh, the artwork will be shipped for free. Shipping is included. So we want to make sure that for the people who are making that donation, uh, 20 by 30, 35 by 45, these are big pieces of artwork. We're going to ship them for free. So please, let's Amazing. go out there. Let's get to our goal. Uh, thank God most people here in America, even through our toughest moments, moments with COVID-19, uh, we are living and we are making it. But there are thousands of our Palestinian brothers and sisters uh, who are struggling. And uh, every dollar that we donate today uh, will go the distance. So, Hanny, um, let's, let's do this. Let's, here we go. Now, listen, Hanny, you and me are still cool. I, I got to be honest with you. I was thrown off a little bit by the Utah name drop. But I'm going to give you one right here, one where this hits home. Ehel, California. They bring it better than anyone. So many Palestinian Americans who rock and are playing a huge role in this event. How about that? The first person from the great state of California. You know what? Forget it, Hanny. Because our ex- you got right. somebody? You have oh, somebody our, executive, our executive director is from California. We're not giving her kafiya. You know, no, we give no. her our love, but not the kafiya. We need some, yeah. you know, number one, by the way, most race people who registered come from the state of California and New York. Yeah. They run neck and to neck. So. so let's do this, Hanny. Let's, let's wrap this up and remind everyone. To make sure to go, let's get this auction going. Let's place our we best. We got one. Order. We got one. Our friend Greg J, I think. So awesome. we have one for California. Who else? Okay, let's do New York. You said you said California. You said New York. How New about Jersey? New York? Can we extend to Jersey too? Jersey, we love Jersey. Uh, Patterson, Haram. Well, al as they say, and New Jersey, who claim okay. they have the best canafa. So you know what? As oh, no. a token of our appreciation, no, nah, no, nah, Hanny. You name drop Utah, okay? Listen, you Jersey. Irish, Irish. <laughs> Thanks, Raj. God bless you. And New Jersey, if you have somebody, let's have it. And I want to say a, a big congratulations. Uh, the UNRWA staff and Laila and everyone, you know, she was the host. Uh, this yeah. is a beautiful production, and what you are doing is amazing. Keep up the great work. And for all the runners and walkers who completed uh, the event, the race, 5K walk, uh, God bless you all. This is the heart. We're going to get to our goal, but we need your help. Rush, a final note. So this artwork will be a reminder of the good work you're doing. Remember, you will get in some of these pieces, you will get a letter of authentication. So you're getting a piece of art that only you have, or sometimes it's a limited edition. So just, you know, be generous and uh, let's have fun with this together. And we will be uh, back with more surprises. Thanks, hey, Rush. my brother. God bless you. Could I get a kafia or we're not? That's a conflict as well. We lost Hanny's audio there, so you must have left him speechless, Rush. Thank you. All right, Layla here. I'm back. Thank you, Rush Darwish. Thank you, Hanny. That was an incredible segment. There's so much fun to watch. Rush representing Palestine and representing Chicago. Uh, we, we actually co-hosted the first Chicago Gaza 5K together back in 2017. I can't remember the year. It's been so many years, but Rush and his team were amazing. So please check out the Running Refugees. They're going to be doing a huge relay to support UNRWA USA's work sometime in the next month or so. So stay tuned for that. Um, so, yeah, such gorgeous artistry and talent. Really, I don't know how anyone could just choose one piece. If I were you, I would bid on all of them. And as of 2.23 p.m. Eastern, which is what I'm presenting to you now, we are just shy of seven, we're $7,000 shy of the $350,000 goal. And you know, much of our work at UNRWA USA involves fundraising to provide these humanitarian programs through UNRWA, the mental health program, cash assistance, and so many other amazing efforts, food assistance every Ramadan. But what you might not know is a great deal of our work also involves advocacy, with having our first ever advocacy day on the Hill last year that involved the right to movement Palestine runners. 
And uh, so next, you will hear from our partner here in Washington, representing the agency's office. Anra has an agency office in the city, and we are separate as the nonprofit, just to clarify that distinguished uh, and distinguish. Stuttering over my world, you, you guys got me so excited, I can't even speak straight now. But you will hear from her as well, everyone's favorite Palestinian American congressperson. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hi, Campbell. I'm, I'm the director of UNRWA's office here in Washington. Thank you so much for joining UNRWA USA's Gaza 5K. This is a critical fundraising event, but also an opportunity to showcase the important advocacy work that you do on behalf of Palestine refugees. Thanks so much to our partnership with UNRWA USA, we've been able to significantly increase Congress's awareness of the needs and rights of refugees across the Middle East. Together, we bring our voices to the halls of Congress, to various administration officials, and make sure that Palestine refugees are not left behind. Today, more than ever, we need not only your funding to help support our education, healthcare, and humanitarian assistance, but we also need you to raise your voice with members of Congress and tell them how important it is that the U.S. government return to funding UNRWA. Thank you so much for your support. We look forward to continuing working with you. Bye. Keep your fundraising going for Palestine refugees. Hi everyone, salams, it's Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Thank you all so much, especially uh, UNRWA USA's National Committee for putting this event together, the virtual 5K Gaza and Festival uh, event to support uh, so many of those that are most vulnerable, uh, especially uh, those facing mental health and traumatic experience right now during this pandemic. But I want you all to know I'm there in spirit. I am so grateful uh, for all of you to continue to humanize the oppression and, and what is actually happening in the ground in Palestine. I um, wish I could be there with you. As you all know, I just won a very important re-election campaign and trying to spend time with my family. But I'm there, of course, always as your partner to speaking truth to power as we uplift those that need it the most. Thank you so much and please um, support uh, and share with others that might not be able to participate. There are so many of those that support our initiative and our movement. Thank you, take care, salams. Thank you, Congresswoman Tlaib. We have, I'm told, several hundred people on the live right now, people that have been coming in and out. There are 1,500 of you that signed up for this event. Tell any friends or family that haven't tuned in yet to join us now because something great is coming next. Um, in addition to the people watching, I want you to know that we have almost every single U.S. state represented and many countries around the world, including Palestine. Shout out again to all our folks in Palestine and in Lebanon. Use that hashtag Gaza5K to tell the world what you are doing right now, what you did this morning. Remember, there's a hashtag challenge. If you have the coolest post, I'm gonna choose you as a winner later in the program and you'll win a prize. So it's worth it to put it out there to win, to show the world what you're doing and to inspire others to help win more hearts and minds for this cause and to share the voices of our sisters and brothers who do not often have the mic. Okay, so before we move on to the next uh, segment of performers and VIP speakers, you've all been really patiently waiting to see. I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. If we can get our sponsor names up on the screen. All right, a big shout out to Sultan Caboose Cultural Center, Beledi Foods, and Nira, who ran this morning, Pama, Met Global Zuheb Waresh, who matched your donations. Dr. Abid Musa, Che Afana, the Thirumala family, Elias and Annette Aberdina from our board and the Farah family, as well as Mike Farah from the host committee. We could have not put this on without you. It takes a lot to pivot a in-person event, which we've always done, into something virtual amid the circumstances. And I want to tell you some of the things that we faced you would never imagine. The, you know, the explosion in Lebanon the um, electricity and fuel shortages in Gaza, our colleagues, when we tried to connect with them, sometimes it took them two days just to get back online. It's been so challenging for our colleagues in Gaza, and we're really so glad for those who are able to, to join us, but it's all contingent on their electricity situation. But the financial sponsors helped cover the cost of putting this on and making this quick pivot, and I hope 
that you are enjoying what you see. Next, again, I know you're super excited to hear from the artists we have lined up. So you're going to hear from Alia Shaukat, who you know from State of Grace and Arrested Development. Following Alia, we'll hear the vocal talents of Elise Azkul, a Palestinian Lebanese American from Michigan, who lives now in Atlanta, Georgia. She was a recent contestant on NBC's The Voice. And throughout the rest of the program and before the DJs close us out with our Defke party, shout out to DJ Bassam from the DC area and Saruna from Palestine. You will hear from Amara Fedendam, Soul Band, and someone who I went with live just before this program. You do know him. It's MCA Abdul, the unrestudent turned rapper. So keep with us. Keep following the hashtag. Take those selfies. Be shameless. Remember, it's for a cause. Post your videos. Show us how you're watching the program. I want to see you guys tagging us at under USA and hashtag Gaza 5K. Thank you again to everyone who tuned in. Thank you for your donations, your fundraising, your walking, your running. I will be back with you after these performances. But for now, sit back, relax, post on social media and enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Alia Shawkat. I am speaking to you on behalf of the Palestinian refugees in Gaza, people who have been experiencing physical and emotional trauma for decades, and especially now during COVID-19, with hundreds of cases now inside Gaza. On top of a 14-year blockade and now an embargo of fuel by Israel, meaning only three to four hours of electricity on top of everything. How can hospitals function or kids grow in a healthy environment with these restrictions, having seen so much conflict in their young lives? In this extreme time, we all as people need support, especially mentally, to move through this pandemic when so much loss and suffering is happening around us. So I could only imagine how much these refugees in Gaza need it. I have been lucky enough to spend time in Ramallah and have dear friends from Palestine. I cherish the relationships I have there and I'm always struck so deeply by the endless unjustness that continues to plague this holy place. Here in the U.S., we are confronting the racial injustices our country has been ignoring for so long. With the Black Lives Matter movement, Americans are fighting for change with a fervor that we hope and need to be heeded. The Palestinian struggle mirrors this plight. We must come together with our supported allies to fight against these greater evil administrations and the ways in which racism is embedded in these institutions. It is a cause that has always been very close to my heart, and I am very grateful to you for sharing with me and wanting to help as best we can. I send you and your families love and health. In the words of Angela Davis, it is in collectives that we find reservoirs of hope and optimism. Shukran. Hi, everybody. Lori and Pepper here. We just want you to know that your donations are still needed. So join Pepper and hop to it. Hey guys, my name is Elise Azkul and I am so honored to be here with you today. Um, you may recognize me from last season of The Voice, Team Gwen Stefani, what, what? <laughs> or if you are a basketball fan or sports fan, you might have seen me on Inside the NBA uh, singing a little song with Shaquille O'Neal. Um, but I am the most honored and excited to be here with you guys today to support such an amazing cause. UNRWA USA does such beautiful things for Palestine refugees and humans all over the world. And um, today's today's 5K supporting uh, mental health for children in Gaza is near and dear to my heart. I feel like this is such such a, an important thing to be supporting and to be giving to. And um, these kids need it and they're blessed by it. So um, I just wanted to say thank you guys for being here and supporting this as well. Um, what a unique and cool uh, experience that we get to be here today and gather virtually. So no matter where we are in the U.S. or all over the world, I just want to say marhaba, hola, como estas, hoy <laughs> um, whatever language you speak, wherever you are in the world, I just wanted to say hello and thank you for being here. And um, I'm going to play you a little song, and I'd like to de uh, dedicate this to... Palestinian kids. So um, this one goes out for you guys, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be singing "Rise Up." You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round, yeah. and you can't find the fighter, but I see it in you. So we can walk it out and move. 
mountains We can walk it out and move up those mountains And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day I'll rise up, I'll rise and afraid I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again And I'll rise up High like the waves I will rise up In spite of the ache I'll rise up And I'll do it a thousand times again Silence is in quiet And it feels like it's a getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like, feel like dying But I promise we'll take the world to its feet And move mountains Bring it to its feet And move those mountains and I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day, I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. And I'll rise up, high like the waves, I will rise up, in spite of the ache, I'll rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. Day will rise up in spite of the ache. I'll rise up, and we will rise up together. We will rise, we will rise together. We will rise up. We'll rise together. <laughs> Let the five K continue. Have a great day. Hope you depth you a little bit. Get that sweat on. And have a great day. This is Nadia here from Kensington, Maryland. And keep your donations coming for Palestine refugees. Thanks. Saddam, peace and love, y'all. I'm gonna offend him here, coming to you live from Los Angeles, representing Team McNathit to the fullest. And it is my honor to be here to help uplift the work of UNRWA USA in support of Palestinian children in Gaza's mental health needs and Palestinian refugees in Lebanon who need urgent assistance, especially as a result of the recent Beirut blast. My heart goes out to everyone affected. Uh, I wanted to just start this off by saying that I understand Palestinian children in Gaza and in Lebanon to be some of the most vulnerable populations on earth, but also to have some of the most incredible potential to do great things and to succeed in life, as long as they're given the opportunities and the resources and the support to do so. In fact, they are superheroes in the making, and I dedicate this verse to them and to everybody watching who is supporting this program. While some men sank in trepidation and banked on medication from angst of separation, the Stalib got by and advanced through dedication, enhanced by preparation and chance of meditation, his cognizance high. The mantra was fly like bombs in the sky, a constant surprise, his impossible rise through the ranks, steady walk in the planks, throwing rocks at the tanks on the blocks of an occupied Middle East, bereft, not an olive tree left, seeing theft in the keys to the lock, he kept steep steps on the stairway to peace, he slipped. Petroleum made these trips that much slicker. Billy crystallized, the city lights flicker. Silly pistols fired a street fight triggered. Other men to fall off their grandstand. Silly held his ground like a handstand. Damn, look up in the sky. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's an Arab superhero. And he came to bring change, unite the divided, and free him from the chains of the tyrants who reign in vain and pain. I said, look up in the sky. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's an Arab superhero. Yeah, I know it sounds strange, but the only thing keeping us from going insane is knowing he'll be back again. See. 
Amidst military coups and the critics of his literary views, he's pitted, wary, given very few alternatives to violence, and yet and still he carries on through scary obstacles. Contrary to popular belief, he can keep a cool head amongst grief-stricken, war-torn Middle East streets, sticking by the weak mothers of the bleak, futureless, populist, confident he speaks truth through the cracked concrete of urban eruptions, proving that policies of curbing corruption can further the function of justice and earning the trust of a people who've all been flustered, can't move forward, still making babies as though it's all good, running around barefoot, can't afford sandals, huddling by candles to pray, hey, it's nothing that an Arab Superman can't handle. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's an Arab superhero when he came to bring change. Unite the divided and free him from the chains of the tyrants who reign in vain and pain. I said, look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's an Arab superhero. Yeah, I know it sounds strange, but the only thing keeping us from going insane is no one will be back again. Now, like a couple Bedouin homes, I'm too tense. Writing up these relevant songs, I do vent, waxing poetic on the fact that pathetic leaders act sympathetic when we know they ain't sent not one cent or irsh of aid to refugees. Pot belly kiss, they lay in SUVs, not really skilled. Who braves this mess you leave? What must we say to pass over these developmental disasters that are lying ahead? Living in denial like Egyptian pyramids, coming to a point where the bubbles gonna burst and desalinized water will no longer quench our thirst. We need a glass half full for the youth shine an optimistic outlook from the roof line like bat signals till the criminals fade away here he comes to save the day and hopefully with a big old plate of knafe <laughs> أونروا يو اس اي على المشروع اللي بتقدم فيه دعم لاطفال فلسطين غزه وبالفيديو الجاي حنعرف مين صول خلينا نروح للفيديو مرحبا انا حماده حداد فارس سعيد وعندنا رهف شومان لسه موجودين بغزه فرقه صول تاسست بال2012 وبعد هيك حاولنا انه احنا نطور من حالنا ونكبر من حالنا لحالنا طول باند قامت بكثير من الانشطه والنشاطات اللي علاقه بالموسيقى شاركنا في كثير من الحفلات على المستوى المحلي وعلى المستوى الدولي منها مهرجان فلسطين الدولي مهرجان على السطح اخرها كان برام الله بي ام اكس وحابين نقدم لكم حاجه هيك على السريع مزيكا قلت لهم ان شاء الله يا We are Cameron, Mia, and Candice. Michigan, Michigan, with the message to the kids in Gaza. We love you. Those performances gave me so much life. We saw. Palestinians from the U.S. We saw Syrians from the U.S. We saw Palestinians from Gaza. We saw uh, Ali Ashokat, who I believe is Egyptian. And you know, we have one more performance coming up, uh, and then our DJ party. Before that, I would actually like to give a shout out to some of our outreach partners. These are sponsors that gave with their marketing power. So if I can get those names up on the screen, I'd like to shout out the American Muslim Health Professionals, the Center for Arab American Philanthropy, the Institute for Middle East Understanding, IMEU, MISNA, Palestine American Coalition, Palestinian American Community Center, PAC in New Jersey, Right to Movement Palestine, Running Refugees, the Jerusalem Fund, the Palestine Foundation, the USA Palestine Mental Health Network, and Tomorrow's Youth Organization. These organizations did so much to get the word out to our supporters. They also fundraised alongside our financial sponsors. So I also want to say shout out to them again, our influencers and all of you. Now, the moment that all of us have been waiting for, I got to talk to this young man earlier on Instagram Live. You can go back and catch it if you want. It was a spontaneous interview. And I'm told 
his birthday is in two days on the 14th, and I think he'll be turning 12. So this kid, honor student from Gaza, he is a rapper who raps only in English. He's taught himself English by watching YouTube, by watching rappers, by watching comedy stand-up. That's what he told me anyways earlier today. He loves Tupac and Eminem and Jay-Z and Mike Shinoda, and he raps those songs, but he writes his own songs. And this song that he is going to sing for you or rap for you is just too good. And I'm so, so thrilled again to present him to you. Under a student, rapper, MCA Abdul. I was born in Gaza City, born here in the Gun Shots Brit. Kissing up from powder, sips of ruins, bricks and shops. This is the first day of my life I have already sent to war. I don't want to very long for me to see another war. To take us back to our room and it's school for refugees. Kids that this is proud of just to get the kids off of their knees. I'm away home from my class. Walk a trace of the same glass. Monsters get your words and fast. Power just not gonna last. I was born in Gaza City, born here in the Gun Shots Brit. Tasting of good powder, steps and ruins, bricks and shops. Since the first day of my life, I have already since the wars. I don't want to very long for me to see another more. To be back in one room and school for refugees. Kids and just try the best to get their kids off of their knees. I'm away home from my class. Walk the streets of the same glass. Mom says get your work and fast. Power just not gonna last. I'm Abdi Rahman Shanta. I'm 11 years old. And I'm studying at the school of Salah al-Din for the Lajeeen. And my hope is to back it up and sing rap. I started to sing rap before a year. I saw that he was not in the rap. Because I love the rap, I tried to sing. And I was talented in it. And from the time I tried to sing from the time I tried to sing from the original. وبحفظ اغاني كفرز لاغاني يعني لفنانين مشهورين انا بحب الراب من وانا صغير عشان هيك بسمع له هو يعني ماي فيفورت كايند اوف ميوزك وانا حبيت اتعلم برضه اللغه الانجليزيه من زمان وبرضه من وانا صغير يا ليدرز اند جنتلمن اوف دي نارد نيشنز بليز بي سيتد كاز ام بات تو تيك ماي ستيشن ام هير فروم ماي هوم ان ذا جاد ستريت اف يو هاف سين يو شود تيك ا تريب ام هير تو تيل يو هاو اور لايفز ار هارد We got broken streets and bombs in the yard. We work really hard to take care of each other. I'm grateful for the help of my sisters and brothers. They sent me here on a mission of peace. The fighting of violence, now that's gotta cease. Please listen to me, I ain't telling no lies. You gotta give this Muslim muscles out of the skies. We can heal the old wounds like a stitcher and suture. Do it for each other, cause we're the future. If we all work together, we can make this thing right. Put down the weapons, cause we don't wanna fight. The things that I'm saying no, they aren't something new. These are the things you should have taught me to do. It's not something strange to love one another As the most physical of all sisters and brothers We can all work together to make a new nation Focus on sharing love and get education We'll live our lives happy and free Get your hands together, come and join it with me Make the effort to be patient and kind Come and keep up with me, no lagging behind We march forward to the brand new day You can have a better tomorrow if we're trying in the way Make a difference, that'll change all of the nations We'll win in the world, run with love and patience If this is more the words I want to see in action Then my generation will see some satisfaction ليش انه ما في عندنا احنا مدارس للراب خصوصا بالانجلش انها تعلم كيف يكتب الرابر عن نفسه او يكتب يتعلم كيف الكتوبه وما في هنا مدرسه بتطور من موهبتي للراب حلم انه اصير من الرابرز الناجحين وطموحي انه اصل للعالميه جايز انا بدي اغني لكم مقطع راب صغير هو من هو اخر اغنيه انا كتبتها بتحكي عن حياتي وبت... هي اوريجينال سونج ف بتمنى انكم تحبوها يا يو دونت هاف تو بي ريتش اند باورفول تو ميك ا ديفرنس وات هولز ذس وورلد باك از ايجنورنس ان ذا سيستم سمول اكشنز اوف كايندنس زي هيلب اس امبروف سبين جود فايبس اون ذا ستريك اوفر لاي باك بروف Money, petrol, seas, and fights for other lands. They make wars, these problems. Keep power in their hands. I'm a drop of water, but the sea can't be without me. Yeah, I know I'm just one kid, but being one is astounding. But I don't have all the answers. But it's one thing I'm sure that our enemies would be friends if we were all poor. Worried by violence, passing the pain to our children. We are all in this together, as humans and now we're billions. Bravo. 
Yeah, He's so cool, guys. I was nervous talking to him earlier. I was like, he should be emceeing this, not me. That kid's got skills life and media training. Oh my gosh. Kenny, what do you think? I'm so honored to have this Palestinian refugee who actually goes to an honor was school and he taught himself English with the help of his teachers. But you know what? He wouldn't be where he is without his amazing parents who make him who he is. And I think they're very proud. They're watching, by the way. They're having a hard time. I spoke with the dad earlier with the lockdown and they can't go, they can't film, they can't, you know, but I'm happy that he's, despite of all that, he's able to come through and, you know, chat with you earlier. And it's amazing. This is the potential we talk about at Unruwa USA, amazing potential that, you know, it's just guided in the right direction and with the support, education and keeping folks healthy, that's where we can get. And I'm so happy. I want to just congratulate everyone so far on the great program, the speakers, the awardees. I want to just remind folks that we are only $5,000 shy from our target, $5,000. So this is, think about the great thing you've done so far. You've done amazing things. Mashallah, we're very proud. Mabrook, we're very happy. We want to finish strong and finish with that $5,000. And I know we can get there. So again, every gift counts and we really, we're going to make sure, you know, this money will be put to work where it, make, where it can make the greatest impact. And, you know, we're happy to just keep the program rolling and make sure, you know, there's a lot more DJs and there's a lot more fun. But let's keep the donations happening. Keep an eye out for the auction. And one last thing. I know we gave out kafiyas uh, and, you know, we'd love to send more of these. But today, until midnight, anybody who actually... Uh, yeah, signs up to become a monthly donor any amount and they could stop their donation anytime they like as we will gladly send you a kafia my colleague and Benu here and i will send you kafias amazing way to support the palestinians especially the hard hit city of hebron now between them and gaza those are the toughest spots with covid 19 so keep them in your prayers and thank you know that we're going to go to bed tonight grateful for your support yep yep and you heard that if you sign up to be a monthly donor today, you get one of those beautiful kafiyas, uh, either the one from Hebron or or the other one. So thank you so much. Uh, Hanny's also going to send you kanafa. <laughs> I finished that, so we're good. Uh, there's none left. Of course, you ate it all again. Okay, I, I think people need to know that Hanny's family made that fresh today. The kanafa shop in Virginia was not open in time. They made that at the crack of dawn, and that was just like, I'm jealous. I need a bite. So I apologize for people from Nablus because this is their thing. We tried our best. And it was our <laughs> colleague Venus' first time, and he tried Knappa live before a thousand people. <laughs> I liked it. Okay, so now I get the easy part, which is expressing our immense gratitude. Uh, first, I want to do a huge shout out to the sponsors. Uh, uh, we had some amazing sponsors who came out today. Sultan Kaboos Cultural Center, Baladi Foods, Anera, Pama, Med Global, and uh, some amazing in individuals who sponsored and helped us put together this event and, and show all of you today. We have, uh, again, the match provided from uh, Zoheib Wararish, excuse me, Dr. Abed Musa, Che Afana, and our colleague Venu in our office, his family, the Thirumala family, came together as, as a sponsor. Thank you so much, uh, Venu's Elias and Annette Aberdeen, Aberdeen, no, as others know them by, and the Farah family. Shokran Ktir. Without your monetary support and without the support of all of our outreach sponsors, we couldn't have put together this event so quickly and pivot in this in this time of COVID-19 to a virtual event. We've never done anything like this. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also have to thank our stellar staff, two of whom you see right now on screen, but I want to name each of them. Venu, Harley, Maithani, Brett and Lori Mosier, who's been behind the scenes throughout all of this, making sure this platform works. Thank you, thank you so much. And I wanna thank, he's right in front of me here, this gentleman, Hanny, who brought passion and energy to every fundraising interaction he has had all year and to this event today, to the auction as you saw him. And of course, uh, we can, uh, we wanna give our whole heart, we wanna thank so much the hostess with the mostest, our favorite MC, Leila Mocheber, who, <laughs> who probably about a thousand of you in the audience know personally. Um, she put together this whole program with all of us helping her and has done a stellar job. And finally, and most importantly, to all of you out there in the audience, your generosity, your excitement, your chats, 
have fulfilled us. We have gotten so close and hopefully by the end, very end of this, we'll get to that 350K mark, but we've gotten so close and that will help now, that will go to UNRWA and help, uh, help make sure that the next generation uh, of artists and musicians and movers and shakers you saw today thrives. Huge congrats and huge thanks. A Over big shout out to you, Mara. A big shout oh, out. You made you. this big. You pushed this really hard to dream big and go big with this new. And nobody knew in this space. And this is new. And you pushed us. And you really made sure we go through. And you knew that our donors are generous. So shukran kthir. And with that, I send you this. Oh, All right, y'all, don't leave yet because the program is not over. I also want to echo Hanny's thanks and gratitude to Mara. Mara, Hanny, and Brett, and Venu all came on in the last year, some of them just in the last seven months. And Venu, I had just met the other day when he brought me my microphone that you're hearing me from for the first time. We hired him during COVID. I had never met him. And so it's amazing what we were able to do as a team, all completely remotely, and what you all did from your respective homes to support it. I mean, the energy is felt. I'm sitting here alone, but I feel so connected. And so that's really great. I asked you earlier today to use our hashtag to post whatever you could to bring more attention to this cause. And this is gonna look like WASTA, but I swear it's not. I got a compliment in the comments from this gentleman, but this pick was selected by my team, by Maveny and by Harley. But I have um, the distinct honor of awarding now, Mr. Steve Simon from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Check out that post. <laughs> I learned so much in my life from Steve Simon. He was my Sunday school teacher as a kid and my team happened to pick you. And so I think they did a great job picking the best post. I love that pose there. So um, we, again, are so, so grateful for everything that you all did today. We want you to stick around for this next segment. It is the party. If you missed the first two DJs in the morning, you will be able to replay this later on in the month, but now, we have a death gift party and we have someone really special to dance you into it. He did medical mission work in Palestine recently with PCRF. He's totally into the cause. He shares it all over his Facebook and his Instagram, which are wildly popular. You see him dancing with his patients. You see him on the internet and he is none other than Tony Atkins, the dancing doc. So yella, let's dance. <laughs> And with that, the digital festival is now over. Until next time, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.